being a man, mm-hmm. he's an artist from when he was a little boy. Looking at him as a young child star, that's exactly who we see ourselves as. You don't know how this ghetto bad mind and having a barrel come. Yeah. That, that, he that brought is a little awesome. truck, and wheeler, and park it up, and said, that's your truck. Don't play it more on feet. Why killer is my general? I kill him by my first car. A killer, my ax, I show and kill a foul in my community in a riot. Now. <laughs> my first car, my boy, was because of Bunty killer. I did on a bus one time, half a tree, and said Bunty under the, like, they used to wash cars in the half a tree bus park. And mm-hmm. I did on the bus for a puppy, you know. And when I see a Bunty killer that stand up there, so I come off of the bus and just stand up one side and just look for them. All the artists I ever helped, I want them to give thanks for the help that Dandy Mike gave me. That is the big problem in Jamaica. We not have no love. If they want to help, tell the government, go back and play, look into my eyes, a cappella. Where them are do where attack. Now tell me about not where me sing. Tell me about where me bring. Do not me. No, <laughs> General with me for restart. Me thing on reconnect. Me <laughs> reach Bang, I'm old. But we're here, we're here. Do apologize for the late start, but I don't know. I got kicked out of the Zoom, but Jaja, we're there. Everything maxed up right now. The force is is trying to force us out. Trying to, but you know what? It will happen regardless. It don't matter what them do. You know, they can't. They cannot. Um, a part of me wish that this interview was earlier so I could get to greet you with the popular good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> right, that basically works just the same. But, you know, your story, Killer, is larger than life and it cannot be told in one hour. So I really had exactly. to condense it. So the people will absolutely get enough. So let's just start with the foundation. So you were born in Trenchtown, but grew up in Callaloo Bedroom and Riverton, what was what was life like for young Rodney Price growing up with, with a, in, in a family with eight siblings? Well, life was exciting at the time as a boy. I didn't know what we was going through. I didn't, ex- I didn't understand poverty. So mm-hmm. when I was a little boy, it was just a lot of fun and excitement growing up in the ghetto, getting to go out on the road and to go play with others and to go experience seeing the music and the artists because we used to have a lot of street dance and those times you never had to pay going to dance so in the early part the little baby and the little boys kids could go in the lawn and watch his own mm-hmm. strings up and the selector warm up the party and the early dj and when the people them come them say all for free and you have to come out now <laughs> sometimes we used to hide in the lawn yes. when the big people come and then we go on like we are pick up buckle so the promoters don't pressure you because you look like some form of help. Yes. So life was exciting for me as a little boy when I was growing up, like six, seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. Is when I become like 10, 12, I start to realize that we're poor and we don't have nothing. And this life mm-hmm. is not so exciting. You know? well, so, so at that time when, you, when, when, you, when that realization hit you, still as a youngster, um, how did you process that? Well, I realized that my parents never have much to give me because I realized on birthday, so I never got a gift. I never had a birthday party. And I mm-hmm. only had two shoes, <laughs> one for mm-hmm. school and one for going out. And you have to wear it mm-hmm. only on spe- a special occasion. I even got beaten to wear my, 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 my going out shoes going out when shoes. it was <laughs> not a special occasion. <laughs> and it wow. put me and my father at ads. So I start to hustle. I become mm-hmm. a hustler. I start to go... Also, buckle and kappa and loom and go catch fish and go key and peace and start to help my mother sell pillar and plate sponge. And I started to learn hustling when I realized I was a poor boy. Mm-hmm. Young, young un- entrepreneur, I mean, that is the entrepreneurial mindset where you're going out there and you're not working for anybody, but you're thinking about innovative ways to get your own from, from even a youngster. Now, both yeah. your mom and, and dad were hardworking um, killer. What, what values did your parents pass on to you that still resonates with you to this day? Well, my parents always tell me that we must stick together and bond together and we must Look out for each other, all our siblings, and they always tell you that make your conscience be your guide 
I always wonder what that my mother always telling me, and then I get to learn that it's the little voice inside that speaks to you when you are making mm-hmm. your decision. So they always tell me to work hard, and I must be honest, and do good, and good will follow. Mm, and boy, did good follow. But you, you, you said as a youth, you were still a young entrepreneur, whether it was helping your mom to sell the pillows or you hustling with the bottles and stuff. Where did school fit in in, in, in all of that? Oh, well, I started school from about six, seven years old. You know. mm-hmm. I started at Dwayne Park Primary. That's my first mm-hmm. school. And then I moved on to Edith Dalton James Secondary. It, that, that, it's in high school now, but at the time it was a secondary school. Mm-hmm. So those are the two schools I attended. And by ninth grade, it was high grade. I fell out. Mm. Whoa. I, I did a few evening classes after that, but never anything too affirmative. So mm-hmm. it's really ninth grade I really stopped going to school. Mm-hmm. So, so at, All because at, of financial and political indifferences, because it was the red and green era in the 80s where, you know, people used to mm-hmm. have bought a line, you can't go there, and if you live over that side, it's a problem to go to that side. And Blaney Park was a place with Sherlock and Brook Valley where mm-hmm. those two fractions always having problems. And the schools are in between the two sides. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so, so here it is, you're out of school at age nine, you're still doing your hustling and you, you got exposed to the music very young by sneaking into the dances and watching the sound man, them string up the sound and that kind of thing. But can you Yeah, remember? and then my father used to have a sound system, not mm-hmm. really one that plays up, but back in the days, everybody have a stereo or mm-hmm. a component set or a sound system because Jamaicans were so musical back then. Everybody just loved music. So my father used to play all this music in the yard. And then when I really get fascinated to be a DJ is after I saw my cousins, John Wayne, the late great John Wayne, me soul, rest in peace, and Penny Harry. They are two brothers and they are cousins of my, my mother and their mother's cousin. So we are like far cousins. So I saw oh. John Wayne become a big superstar in Kalaloo Bed and wow. Penny Harry follows after. So that's when I really fascinated to think of being a DJ. So I started to practice people songs and DJ about people lyrics. Never really have no lyrics on myself. Then that day I used to mm-hmm. just make up words and rhyme. And then I used to go at drama ring and then we start calling me Matlock and name some there. My friend next <laughs> start boost me, say, you have so much argument in love chat. So hold the mic. And I just hold the mic all the time bragging rights and ego. I never had no lyrics. I never know what to DJ, but I just so want to get the better at them. So I hold the mic and me ain't up a sing. Remember what my face said? Straight right hit me. So me ain't up a sing a Junior Reed song. Mm. A Junior Reed was one of the popular artists who used to come in the community, come sing and shoot the mix and King Jammy's song. Mm-hmm. So everybody know the Junior Reed song. It was a popular little girl song. Woman, make your waistline roll. Hey. Put one and you're ready like a TV goal. Just an ability and a button the sorrow. Cha la 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 la. We get a good response. <laughs> so nobody never knows stage right me, stage right and sing that song. Then just think I sing more and sing. So we kind of <laughs> like the response. So mm. we go home and start practice now to rhyme. So we go make up a little lyrics. So from there now, we feel like me as an artist. I'm start get some grooming from two of the more veteran artists named Blacker Welch and Johnny Marshall in the community. Mm-hmm. And that's my first DJ experience. And we never really think nothing more about it. We start hustling the figure with my brother and struggle I reach me now because I'm here big boy. So DJing wasn't anything like lucrative to take you out of the struggle. Mm-hmm. DJs was just two eat and them fly got far in the year about them again. You never have a really DJ where big and rich, more than Yellow Man and Peter make sure them, them time them. Mm-hmm. And they never look rich, they just look like them and make a money. Mm-hmm. So that do my figure eating until my move that save you. And that's when the DJ thing come back, when Shabba ranking burst and all these things, you know, the inspiration comes to take it serious. So and what, then we go liquid boom down the mic. 
Okay, so, so take us now to see if you linking with Boom Randomite, seeing Shabarangs, and still as a youth, what did that do to you? Was was it planted in your heart then that you could be like them? Yeah, when I went back to see if you know, I started to see the more transition artists, because by the time we moved to see if you know, DJ things start to get like a more popular. And you got mm -hmm. bigger DJs now. You got the Ninja Man, and you got the Super Cat, and you got the Shabba Rankin, and the Cutty Rankin, and the Mad Cobra. So that was the time when the music started to get international. When Shabba mm -hmm. came through, and the Patron, all these international, the Richie Stevens. So Shabba come live a see you know. I would start to see the lifestyle, and that intrigues mm -hmm. a young boy, you know. You see the Benz, mm -hmm. and the big chain, and the pretty girls, and the flashy life. Mm. And then we know that's Miss Christie's son, and this is Miss Ivy's son. Oh, I can't be like him. Wow. So the inspiration really drives me from there. And then Boom Down the Mike now was a community star who we look up to. And then he was on the verge of doing recording and going to studio, the things that we inspired to really want to get to do. And we start to link with Boom, and Boom start telling the roots and say, yeah, I forgot to studio and whatever, whatever. And start to learn to do dub plate and these little things and boom start to carry to jammies and from there the miracle work you know so t take us back to 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 jammies and describe that experience for us because um and, and how that that experience there helped to shape um you know ultimately your dancehall career no well going to jammies was like going to foreign when you go to jammies and you Whoa. see the big them and the big cars and the big chain and yo that was so fascinating just to stand up and watch the stars and then you couldn't get in the studio in time they have big gate and security and you have to have reputation and <laughs> credentials so i was just fascinated to go and watch them and then there was a thing called audition that's the only little break young artists used to get mm -hmm. if you go on an audition in your pass to get to go recording but I never Whoa. get to pass a Jammies recording audition what? because Jammies audition was so full with all these big artists and more experienced people. So you mm -hmm. was a little guy, you never get the chances. Well, you Jammies brother, Uncle T, who works on a Saturday, who does his recording on weekends when the studio is not that Crowley. popular or fully capacity because during the week, people used to come from West Milan, Nick Grill, St. Mary. That's when people used to come and studio the gate, a bigger bus. And the like now, people had the recording in them backyard and them bathroom. It used to be like, if you know, God jam is in the pan, the blue and white label, not now go off. If you know, go penthouse, how mm -hmm. you know, go, how the bars copy the popular places, how you never go roof them time. That you remember how the game used to be. You have to be with the main labels. It's not now where the music open up, where every little man can just come up with a label and it work. So mm -hmm. we never get to go a Jammies addition. We get to get an Uncle T one. And that's how I get in. I started to work with Jammies' brother, Uncle T, first. And then Jammies get to recognize my talent down the line. But it was really his brother who got me into the studio. I met me have a pass where I could known as Uncle mm -hmm. T artist. I don't get locked out when I come to the studio anymore. No, Copper Shot released in in 1992 Bounty is is kind of a bittersweet. I mean, it tells the tale yeah. about you getting shot as a teenager, and it also uh -huh. represents your first hit song. Um, take yeah. us back to this defining moment in your career, which also represents your musical introduction internationally. Well, the song Copper Shot, it was released before I went to Jamaica. You know? Copper Shot mm -hmm. was released like. 1990, I think, by Mikey Coos, because I recorded that song on a gigi rhythm for Mikey Coos, and then they, they, they changed the rhythm because the Bam Bam came out and mm -hmm. went off internationally mm -hmm. with players and Shaka Demos, and then he was from London. So when he went back to London, I don't know what went in his head to everything was Bam Bam, I guess, eating changing the song to bam bam would make it better but songs are normally good and rhythms that match the groove 
Mm-hmm. Not just because of the rhythm popular, you think you can't put a hot song on a popular rhythm and it must work. The groove and the pattern have to match. So I guess that never works. So the song flap. So mm-hmm. when I went to Jammies, they gave me the, the, the general rhythm and them time, me never liked slow rhythm because me never know about groove, me just know about vibes and tempo and more, everything full of vibes. So when them mm-hmm. give me that rhythm, they never so excited about the rhythm. So. That's why I say I got to do back a song when I do a rhythm and a rhythm. Because I never think that this was a rhythm for boss me. So I say I recycle a song. So mm. it's really recycle me and recycle a song and put it on a rhythm. Because I never think it was the best rhythm at the moment for me. And then wow. me change who line. Because the song original, if I say, From a man back in gun, you feel run. Then me change the song say, From me pop out, me gun blow dog go run. That's the only two lines I change in the song. And vice it on the general. Then the king never really into the gun song thing at the moment, cause the radio just started censoring in '92. So they were more in working with songs that good for radio. Mm-hmm. So King was advising me to do a different song, but because me never have no credential, the engineer never really excited to really re-record me. So I never get to do another song, and then the song get out and add that and go to New York and Johnny Wanda put it out and the, the flip side of Miss Cody Cody with Colin Roach and Galaxy P and he took off in New York because that's where it came out first. It wasn't mm-hmm. released in Jamaica because King wanted a different song. So it's wow. after it run away in New York, King realized it don't make a big difference. It's a new song somewhere in the world. So let's release it. And then Jamaica took on to it. Follow. But first in New York it got away. And that's but, how my whole jam is history started. Killa, did you did you have like a, a mentor um, per se? Because, you know, you have one of the biggest <laughs> voices in the business and, you know, just your stage presence and stage command. And when you're on and whether it is you're talking or you're DJing your lyrics, people stop and they listen. Did you have a mentor or somebody that uh, helped to guide you and to how you are now? No, I guess... The only mentor I had in music, as I told you, was Johnny Marshall and Blacker mm-hmm. Ranks. Blacker Welch, not Blacker Ranks, my mistake. Blacker Welch and Johnny Marshall from Riverton City and Jeffrey Spencer. These, these are the first set of people who started to show me the ropes. Ever since I learned the craft and I came to Riverton and Sea View and Jammies, I, I just look up to people but nobody never sat me down and say do it this way and it's best this way and best not to do it that way no but there are people who i looked up to like shabba rankin ninja man super cat the whale the mad cobra even the cutty ranking the butcher bantan even be the man too because being a man mm-hmm. is an artist from when he was a little boy looking up and as in, looking at him as a young child star that's exactly who we see ourselves as as age mm-hmm. group. Wow. So all these people inspires me. But nobody never mentors me. Unfortunately, up until this day, <laughs> he's more yeah. like producers, I would say. Like the, the John John, the Jammies, the Dave Kelly, the Steely, the Bobby Digital, all these people that I came through them camp, they, they have showed me things and little ideas. To make Along it different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you know what I want to ask you though, Bounty? Um, here it is now, the song take off internationally. Jamaica follows suit. And you know, this poor gets a youth coming to the realization as a teen that you really didn't have life great in comparison to other persons. What did that do for you and your family? Know that you're getting the traction and people saying your name and 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 yeah, man a star. It did a whole lot. It, it changes, it changes our lives. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it put us on a total different level. And then you know, I, I wasn't one who really shone away from my family because I lived in my house at Seaview up until problems started. As I was one who think that oh, you're supposed to stay with your roots and stick with the people who help build you. So. When I burst, I built up my house in CEO, big upstairs and downstairs car portion, mm-hmm. and AC and all these things. I was in ghetto paradise. 
<laughs> until problem came. 1997, some guy named Rockbot and some people I see you get into some altercation. I was trying to be a mediator or a peacemaker in the middle, and then I end up on one side. And that's not my choice. So I end up after leave CV and they said like I ran away. But I walked away. I, I ran away from problems. Cause that mm-hmm. wasn't my issue. So I never intend to stay and fight a battle that is not mine. So I moved from CV and I took my mother. And I moved into a two a two bedroom apartment in Oakland. And she was in the other room. Cause I decided mm-hmm. I'm not leaving it. Wow. You, you know, and your 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 legacy as a dancehall superstar was cemented after Sting '93. Um, how did your fame? Well, you talk about how it impact your family, but here it is now. You move out, and things got even bigger for for yeah. particular. What, what 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 did that do to you, the man, the person, knowing where you're coming from, what you aspired to be, and and seeing it materialize right in front of your eyes? Were you able to to process this level of stardom? Yeah, well, I really get to process the level of stardom that I reached early. That's why I reached this far, because it inspired me, and then I realized the journey that I have to go. And the people that I was look up to, looking up to is not nobody who really came and do a two-year or a three-year. As you see, a ninja man and a Shabba ranking, they are the, the most legendary stars and a super cat today. Those people are like three decades so it, 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 it tell me that this is the journey and we got to push and we got to keep inspiring others. So I even re-inspired myself with my own journey. That's why I have this drive and my achievement and whatever success I have is a total different achievement from just being at the forefront for this long, being the general, being the top of the game for 30 years, it's different from the success and the achievement. That achievement is a different achievement. Because any product that lasts for three decades, it's one that's royal or classic. Mm-hmm. Wow. And as you say that, Killer, I want to play something for you. <laughs> book, book. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, the, not, 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 not book, book. <laughs> but here, here, here we go. Why killer is my general? A killer me buy my first car. A killer me ask you a show and killer found in my community in a riot. Now. <laughs> my first car me buy was because of Bunty killer. Me did up on a bus one time half a tree and said Bunty under the like them used to wash cars in the half a tree bus park. And mm-hmm. me did up on the bus for got papi in you know. And when me see a Bunty killer that stand up there so, I come off of the bus and just stand up one side and just look for them. <laughs> 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 I remember hearing the first Bounty Killer song them times as a little you before Killer even bust out the Copper Shatter, one of them early Killer. And me I say, yo, when me hear it, I say, mm, the game changed right here. So, and it's like it inspired me then that I wanted to be a part of dancehall and reggae. Now, during the road to success, <laughs> since I've started it, almost every other person from the industry that comes on have a story to tell about how Bounty Killer has influenced them or mm. impacted their life in one way or another. Um, <laughs> did, you, did you ever imagine or thought that you would become such an influential figure that would Im- impact an entire culture? No, I never imagined it, but I really thought I wanted it to. But I never imagined this amount, but I wanted to inspire people. But I never knew it would be this impactful. But I did want it to inspire other people. And I want wow. to help other people. And I want to leave the door hoping that's how we came as ghetto people. We think, say, when you get a man, get in, if you left the door, say, next ghetto man, we don't know how this ghetto bad man and cabin up, I will come. But that's why mm-hmm. me bring here them. And then I come further and bring alliance. Because he's leaving the door open. That's how I do it. And that's why I never even do it for a penny. Because if you do it for a, a penny or a dollar, it's not leaving the door open. It's wow. leaving your pocket full. 
If you're just joining us, it's all about Road to Success, the journey, and we're journeying with Bounty Killer. Now, before Cash Pot, um, Bounty, we were, you were about to get into the Alliance segment and, and highlighting, you know, some of the purses that you have helped to bring to the fore. But one could consider Alliance a university. And just like a chancellor, you have helped to shape the careers of many of our dancehall stars, including the likes of Vibes Cartel, Movado, Busy Signal, Wayne Marshall, and countless others. What is the most what is most challenging rather about artist development? You know, having them under your wings that kind of way and bringing them to the fore and nurturing their talent and putting it out there. Well, the most difficult part is when they are not inspired and they are not driven because mm. you can have talent but if you are not driven and you don't have the inspiration and the aspiration to drive you to take you to the place to highlight your talent it's not going to work because most mm -hmm. people thought from bounty killer call you up on the stage you're gonna bust no honestly bro. i have to call you up on the stage and you do the right thing and you have the right qualities that's how it works you understand? So mm -hmm. when artists come and them have talent, but they're not driven, I can't give you the drive. I only can give you the platform. And you kind of alluded to the next question um, when or before we went to the break. I mean, w w from Scare Them to Alliance, um, your musical DNA is basically embedded into some of the most influential figures in dancehall um, of our time. You know, as you're responsible, like we, we, we've already underscored, putting, their, putting them on a path to, to greatness. You know, the yeah. Elephant Man, Movado, and multiple selectors too, promoters, yeah. producers as well, engineers, and even managers. Um, Musician, disc jackies, managers, you name everything. It. I mean, we burst everything. We're events. Let's name them. Exactly. I'm the one who no. put the stamp and fully loaded, you know. Exactly. Fully Follow loaded was just a regular beach party. It it, it was. When no, I what? went to fully loaded that Sunday, I was not booked. I mm -hmm. just went to a beach party and I was there and I saw Gringo went up and he was trying to discredit Baby Sham and Baby Sham was my latest protege at the time. That's mm -hmm. what drove me to go on the stage to denounce what Gringo was saying about Sham. I never really went to clash Gringo either. So most mm -hmm. people thought about I killed Gringo. I did not kill Gringo because I never sing a song against Gringo. I only mm -hmm. said something against what he said. And then I proceeded to sing, look into my eyes and make this big speech about the government and the country and everything. That was the mind frame I went in. I never went to clash no Gringo. But it was just the big commotion and the confrontation and everybody remember it. It seemed like it was a clash. But it was just a beach party I went and then from then, the next year, Fully Loaded become a stage show. Mm -hmm. a where artists start to go every time and performances take place. But that was the first one, 1999 Fully Loaded. So we burst event, we burst promoter, we burst selector, we burst musician, we burst producer, we burst engineers, artists, managers. Everything <laughs> come across greatness is just greatness. And but but what's the motivation though, um, Bounty, that led you to being the only artist in history of our music to to give so many youths coming from you know less than humble beginnings like yourself the opportunity to to not only change their lives but to break the generational cycle of poverty within their families with no contractual agreement and just pure generosity well i'm i'm like jesus but them call me ground that but that's <laughs> what i came to do help the people and help mm -hmm. my country I'm, I'm like a dancehall Mandela. That's how I see it. I'm responsible for the, the irresponsible ones and the ones who are on the wayside. All the good youths, we responsible for them. The stupid ones, I can't help. But the ones with talent and ambition and who want to come out of the slum, we responsible for show them the way. And mm. then, boom, Dan the might is my inspiration for helping other artists. All the artists I ever helped, I want them to give thanks for the help that Dandemite gave me. Because mm. that's the reason why I did think I had to make scare them get on. 
because wow. a member of Scare Them Crew showed me the way in. And when I got in, I felt like I owed it to them. Wow. And from there on, it, it does become a thing that people respect me for. And I love the love and the respect and the joy that people give me for helping the others. So I keep on doing it. And then they said I'm a mentor and I'm a godfather and all those things. And it felt good. Yeah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm enjoying Beautiful. You know, you know, you put everything into perspective because I saw a, a bone to kill a quote or a rhyme where you're saying, you know, look, I'm doing it for the pleasure, not the treasure. And, you exactly. know, like it, it resonates with me in a big way. I haven't got no treasure from it up till this day. How mm-hmm. much money I've ever made off our artists? I've never made a dollar off of none of these artists. A lot of people that have helped, they have showed me support and they have gave me stuff. And they do a lot of stuff for me, but I never demand anything. And they never hold me nothing. They do it generously. And who doesn't, it doesn't make a difference either. Mm -hmm. That's not the question. No, the the sound system and dub plate culture has been, you know, a lucrative asset in our music since its inception. Um, yet you came and, you know, you raised the bar, adding even more value um, to dub plates. I know what it means when a sound system operator or a poachy or even just a selector to say, yo, I'm about to kill a dub. It's just this level of excitement. Um, can you recall the most outrageous compensation that many couldn't even imagine that you would have received from doing dub plates? I can't recall the compensation is too much. The mm-hmm. amount of millions of dollars I made off a dub plate, I couldn't even try to calculate. I get I more money from a dub plate than stage show in my career. Because tell heard. you what, we do, how long I haven't done a stage show? Two mm-hmm. years now I haven't done a real stage show. So if it was stage show alone, we would not be anybody today. Dub plates is more lucrative than stage show for me. And the amount of stage show you have to do to accumulate dub plates money, it, it couldn't work. But dub plate is something sentimental to me now because the reason why dub plate was the first break we get into the studio to learn how to write rhythm. Because we never get recording experience. Like my first break was sky juice playing the dub for dub so dub become my break like a each song my mm-hmm. first little break was dub for dub so i take dub play serious so when we do dubs we do it like recorded we do it professionally properly and with conviction whenever i'm doing a dub play it feels like when i was doing dub to dub dub for dub for boss so mm-hmm. every time they say dub, it means something that breaks me. So I don't play with people, dub plates. Even I if heard. I'm doing it for free, it, it comes with a certain conviction. It's a platform for me. I don't see it like this. you're just doing a favor. No, I yeah. see it like it's bounty representing. So I True. represent myself, not just the sound. Because if a bounty dub sound whack, it makes bounty look whack. That's what I think. True, true. You know what? I heard that one time you did a, a dub plate and you got a massive um truck. The person wanted oh, no, the it dub wasn't so- one dub plate. One dub plate couldn't give you a truck. A sound man yes. brought a truck and yes. say I should sing for it. <laughs> <laughs> and he sing out my belly. I that did sing for it. Forex, four exodus, dust. Father no. dust. You got father dust. Yeah, that, that, he that brought is a Leland awesome. truck, ten wheeler, and park it up, and say that's your truck. Don't play it more on feet. I'm missing on my belly. So, so Until I own what, the truck. When when <laughs> did you became so brilliant um, with words? I mean, did you always know that you're good with 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 words? The way how you do it. I mean, you could yeah, say the simplest thing. No, I, I was always good with words. That's why they call me the Matlock. Yes, I was Matlock. always a mm. like the TV Until show. I started practicing rhyming. I was good at words and contradicting people and all those things. But when I become an artist now, it's really super cat. And Junior Cat was the rhyming king for me. Enough mm-hmm. people wouldn't know because I never told them that. But the wickedest rhymer for me was Super Cat. 
And then Junior Gat took it up, and Junior Demos, those men, they ran everything. And mm-hmm. then we started to pattern them and say, oh, Nitty Kochi, the girl, them golden, Dutchy Boom, that the mighty girl, the first flight. <laughs> we started to run everything. Mm-hmm. And then I just become like a genius in the rhyming scheme, but it's really those people I really started to follow the rhyme, everything. Wow, we are on the road to success. We're journeying with Rodney Price. Now, um, a quote from Bounty Killer. People always talking about the indifferences and not trying to make a difference. Now, yes. whether it's beds for KPH and the Victoria Jubilee hospitals or wheelchairs and cash donations to offset medical expenses for the elderly, Through the Bounty Foundation that was launched in 2018, you have made giving habitual. How do you decide who or what charity to support? Well, it it all depends. Because sometimes it has a lot to do with the timing. Because it's not every time someone reaches out, it's uh, the appropriate time when... I can afford to, to make a, a donation or whatever. Sometimes they reach out and it can happen at the time, you know? So it's not really, who it's just, oh, I can give. Whenever I can give, I give. So I wouldn't mind give everybody that reach out or everybody that's in need, but it's just to, oh, I can make the offers. And sometimes we get support from a few of our generous supporters and donors who help to contribute to the foundation. So it's mm-hmm. really mostly banky. Find these people because they are the ones who really run the foundation. So one and two times people reach out to me directly. And then mm-hmm. a few cases that I saw and I decide I want to take up. Like recently, the Tiger case, I, I never wait for them to reach out to us. You understand? Because mm-hmm. Tiger is our brother. You understand? So mostly like the wheelchairs and the bed and those things. It's mostly like the, the foundation, the reach out, the, the tiger case, I decided on that. The big stone case, I decided on that. Because big stone is our big brother. And tiger is our big brother. And big stone is another man who I see helping generously. And he, he, he's not like he has it more than anybody. He, he, he go out of the way to help people out of nothing. So I did have to take up that and my hands, but it's mostly the directors of the foundation choose who we make donation to. Mm-hmm. Um, you but know, sometimes you are, I decide. You, you are a general with many titles. I kind of highlighted some earlier, you know, Bounty Killer, Poor People Governor, Warlord, Grown Godzilla. Which of these titles resonates with Rodney Price? or is more aligned with your purpose in life and why? And you know which one it is, man. Or if you ask me that, no, she, <laughs> you, you know which one it is. Tell, it's tell, it tell will have to be the poor people. Yes. That's the mm-hmm. life I live. Grum Godzilla is more on a stage or a warlord thing when I'm performing, because I don't walk around as a warlord, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So mm. the five-star general is just like, a title for the leadership but the one that resonates with me as the person as Rodney Sigerson would be poor people governor because that's my purpose to look out for my brothers and my sister and especially the poor ones who come up in the ghetto like me so Mm -hmm. definitely I would say the poor people governor that one resonates more and I think that was the first title because that's from 1995 the warlord mm-hmm. title come 1998 after the merc- merciless confrontation and then the five star general comes after the, the alliance and all them so those are later titles so the real title is really poor people governor mm-hmm. and, and that's and- what i'm doing today I, I do poor people governor more than how i do warlord i haven't been in mm-hmm. a war for ages 
<laughs> you know, and and your 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 everyday liberty and what you give us a glimpse of through your social media platforms. I mean, it really shows that you know you are on a path and you consistently, repeatedly just try to to help others. And and I'm sure everybody now will have a better understanding as to why you do what you do. But I couldn't have yeah. you on today and not ask you this question. You know, you are undoubtedly one of the most respected among your peers. You heard from the short Vox Pop earlier, Sasko, Marshall, and Charlie Black, and there were so many others. Salute to the um, brothers. <laughs> recently on this very platform, we had Queen Africa, and she hailed you as a powerful king sitting on a throne with great influence over the youths. And like many of us, she too, she sees the ever generous gesture you repeatedly share your platform for decades to create numerous success stories among the, youth. to the queen. But <laughs> right, she also she was saying, you know, she would love to hear like a more positive message from your your recent collaboration with with Jashi, um, especially given the rise of crime and violence in our society. I mean, how would you respond to that one? And two, does it ever become like overwhelming for Bounty Killer or Rodney Price, who is trying consistently, you know, to uphold his societal responsibilities and at the same time, always trying to do right by the youths, you know, like Jashi, who definitely is on his road to success? Yeah, but tell you what. Me doing a song with Jashi, that doesn't define what I stand for. I did several other songs. I guess, oh, she never talked mm -hmm. about the one that I did with Christopher Martin, No Gonna Rise. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody never heard that. I guess they only want to listen to the ones that not pleasant to them. I think we should focus on what we like because I do all different type of songs. And tell you what, it's not one song I do with Jashi. And tell you what, music is what imitates life. We singing a gun song is not implementing guns, and there wasn't gun song when guns were made. So guns is just a part of life. So if we sing a gun song, don't bother act like, oh, we are inciting violence or crime. The time is the time. When they shot Bob Marley, there wasn't no gun song singing because I want to take up this topic. Music is music and life is life. And music does not curve people's attitude and values. I don't want nobody coming with them stupid thing. Every time a man sing about music or whatever, you can sing whatever you sing. He's what into people's mind takes on to music. You notice you don't like the type mm -hmm. of music that you don't like. So no music can influence you to like it if you don't like it. So if the music saying foolish, and you want to do foolish is you want to do foolish because if you don't like fool fool music you don't like it queen africa don't like good boy song that's why she don't like it so anybody that don't like those type of music it's not influencing them anybody like to do what the music saying you could not change them because it's already in them head so i don't want people to see mm -hmm. crime and violence and tell me not about music but tell me about role models Tell me about parent. Tell me about government. Tell me about infrastructure. Tell me about youth programs. I don't want to hear about music. Music can't help nothing. And music never do mm -hmm. nothing. And you, 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 you said it just now, a crucial point that I think um, sometimes when the conversation starts, a lot of persons kind of skip over it. But we have to really hold the feet of parents to the flames because it begins in the home. Just with attitude towards each other, it shapes mm -hmm. society. Look how Jamaican even pass. drive. They don't even want to give you a little pass. Just look how the traffic operates. That tells you the attitude we have among each other. We don't like one another. And it's the clear truth. Mm -hmm. A few of us love each other. That is the big problem in Jamaica. We not have no love. You know all Jamaica rich. Mm -hmm. You know all Jamaicans rich. If Arthur we did a try to quell poverty and violence, it helps. 
nobody now try to help the country, they might try to help themselves. A crab in a barrel, Jamaican play, brag and boast me up more, I'm bigger than you, I'm richer than you. Mm-hmm. Jamaican and no style that. Told. Mm-hmm. that. is what bringing down the country. We now look out for each other, nobody now try to help each other. Nobody not think nobody problem, I feel them problem. A few of us still like me where we take up people problem power with Ed. See, we, most people start talking about, oh, Tiger bag out all the money as some people stay. Because they now look on the needs at hand. They want to look back on your life and try to cuss and come here and brag and boast and wicked people. Mm-hmm. So and Jamaican became barbarians. From mm. the time that tell them when the youth, they might talk about them a demon and them a this and them a that and yes, who they never see it coming. If they want to help, tell the government, go back and play, look into my eyes, a cappella. From 1999, me sing the song, look into my eyes, tell me what you see. Can you see my pain? Am I your enemy? Give us a better way. Things are really bad. The only Friend, I know is this gonna have that was 1999. Look in society, mm-hmm. you know, see that attitude today. If they were trying to take heed and trying to make prevention from them, it wouldn't reach as far. And every year, the crime rate is growing. It has nothing to mm-hmm. do with music, it has to do with the government disconnected with the people. The government mm-hmm. and the people is not in conjunction. And the government not helping youths and the youths are much of the country. Let me tell you that. The killer them are 15 and 18 and 25. And the government not looking out for them. All them do, send out those over look for gun man. Nobody looking for a good man. Until we start mm-hmm. finding the good man and keep them on the good part, they might come gunman. So the harsh reality, everybody try to duck it and then I talk about music and movies and very and YouTube. No, are we, are we attitude towards each other? It leads to this. Facts. Do we, have, we have to do some, um, some, some reflection and introspection and like, like you just said, call out ourselves. Yeah, and, everybody are looking around and truth. looking at the mirror where you are do. Mm-hmm. What the difference you are trying to make? You only are talking about the mm-hmm. difference. Me, find no, get to I... youth and turn them in a superstar. That me do. Just for the joy of it. Where them are do where I talk. Now tell me about nothing when I sing. Tell me about when I bring. Mm. Hey, my Rodney. guns are when I sing. No. By wheelchair, the people. And by bed, the hospital. And pay people hospital bill. Don't tell me when I sing. Tell me when I bring. Hmm. All who I sing about joy and celestial and love and rare, rare, I don't see it to buy nobody food. On the note of love, of love killer, and some two minutes remaining, I know this, I may not, I may not even reach half of my questions. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, so I know I know. Uh, Come on, let's make a table. So, no. so, you know, <laughs> Across your social media platform, we get a glimpse of your life as a father, grandfather as well. Um, Granddad. I know. What what lesson do you want your children and grandchildren to learn early about life? That life is a struggle. Mm -hmm. Life is not easy. Rest in peace means lay in a cemetery. While you're alive, it's going to be ups and down, ins and out, and around and about. And you have to embrace it. And struggle make you strong. Never fear to struggle. Because if you don't struggle, you cannot endure. I never really mm. happy with my struggle when I was coming up. But today, my struggle made me different from my regular peers. I can endure more all because the struggle that I've been through. And I always teach them, you got to be your own self. I have a legacy that they're going to come and live, but they have to be their self. So I always teach my kids, you have to work for your own. And then 
having your own and inheriting your parents' own, it's two different things. And you have your own kids to come up to, so you have to make sure you set your own foundation. So they always try to think individual. Wow. Bone Tequila, on that note, we're going to have to truly wrap, but trust me, we need a part two. I have not delved into 2002, a spectacular year for you. Uh, so many things uh, happened, so many things to touch on. But I knew today I wanted people to fully understand um, Bone Tequila, how generous you are, how giving you are, how selfless you are, and exactly. hopefully... I, I not hopefully. I know that your story today has touched many lives and hopefully it has inspired somebody to give and just be selfless with it. Don't look for anything in return. Selflessness is the thing. Most Jamaicans are selfish. They are individual. They don't like to share. That's the biggest problem. Right now, people don't ever like to associate. Check music, or oh, it's still like a big camp. Everybody over, so everybody over. So they play Jamaicans, Lego, the grudge, the gravelliciousness, and the selfish ways. And we have to bring back ourselves together. The government can't do it. Let's find back the, 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 the common sense of value of people. Jamaicans don't value life. Most of us today, we don't value e each other and we don't value even ourselves. We have to find back the little one love Bob Marley teach us about. We now feel laugh and talk with each other, but we regard each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. Despite the social difference, we should be together in arts. That's oh, my Tequila, word. Thank my... you so much. Rodney You're very welcome, to We have a part two. We have a part yeah, two. Definitely. Thank you we so much. This is awesome. <laughs> we have to have part two. So yeah. <laughs> Don't use that thing, but all right. So bless up. Diary. All right. Thank you. The musical diary. <laughs> it's bloody out there. What's wrong with you? I don't know what's wrong with these guys. Life yeah. is a blessing. Okay, yeah, kill yeah, a man yeah, for a